it folks, this is AT Gaming 91 and today I'm going to be doing the first in a series of pre-1975 decks. Lately I've been using more and more pre-1975 decks because I just feel the availability of troops um, outweighs the disadvantages of technology that you get left with because obviously you don't get some of the prototypes and the later equipment that you get but it works just as well if you use it properly. So today I'm going to be doing an American only one. I'm just going to call it Purple Haze. Nice and typical. Okay, so select bonus. National deck is US. You can put on mechanized if you want because you don't lose that many helicopters. But I'm just going to go for an error bonus of pre-1975. Okay, so it gives you 80% availability for all units. You really can't go wrong with that. I uh, love having lots of units. This really suits my gameplay style. Okay, so first of all, go pick a logistics vehicle. Or a CP. So I always pick just... I like to have something armored. It's just good for in case you come under any kind of artillery fire while they're just randomly looking for your base. Makes it a bit stronger and you can also get away sometimes from things that are only armed with machine guns. Okay, so you get seven of those. Logistics. Now, I always put in an FOB. A lot of people have said, um, posted on videos and form posts that FOBs aren't worthwhile because they cost 100 at the beginning. Well, 200 for me because I always spawn two. But I always, always use them, so it's not like the points are going to waste, and you can never get them back again, so I really can't live without them. And then, you have to put the M35 truck in, because the Chinook, although it's good, you, don't, you get seven of them, and it's such a target for someone, you know, they're going to put a lot more effort into knocking out a Chinook than they are knocking out a couple logistics trucks. Okay, so that's all the logistics I'm going to have there. Two FOBs is more than enough if you're using more than that you're either an artillery whore or you're wasting ammo somewhere um so the logistics trucks just that alone you're getting loads of uh fuel within them so that should be more than enough for a game okay so infantry now you're not exactly spoiled for choice but you do get a fair amount of infantry in this and straight away i always go for the light rifleman in the huey uh Light riflemen are the backbone of most of my um, decks, even before pre-1970. Uh, well, I mean, after pre-1975 decks, I just love them. The, everyone says the dragon's not great for AT, but I love it. So I put those in, and then I'm gonna go up. Have to have the assault engineers. I put the assault engineers in the dragon. I love them because I use them often for holding towns or taking towns. And then I'm gonna forget any kind of. Um, AA infantry because the LAAD red eye it's, it's not the worst but I don't like it so then I'm gonna chuck rifleman in the dragon too I really like the dragon the dragons it's decent to have and I'm gonna put another group of riflemen in the dragon because that's gonna be my cheap infantry I know the light infantry is not light rifleman's not that much more expensive but I like to have a slightly cheaper alternative and the fact it comes in an APC that can fight a little bit Okay, so one more infantry that I always put in is the U.S. Marines in this LVTP-7. It's not great. It's slow as hell, but I just like it. Uh, you get 22 of them, so it's definitely worth it. The Marines are pretty good at um, close combat, house-to-house -house fighting, so in towns, in forests. So it's good to use them for that. Their AT weapon is quite horrible, so avoid engaging any kind of vehicles with them. Um, support. Now the Americans, yeah, they get some great support. I really like them. They get the Hawk. You can't go wrong with the Hawk. It's got great range. It's got great range against helicopters. It's even better than the Chaparral, which are, well, the bad Chaparral, which a lot of people don't know. I know some of my mates had put in that instead of the Hawk. But I'll go for two groups of Hawks. Uh, I know they radar, and it is nice to have an infrared option, but... By time the aircraft has got to the chaparral and it's fired, the aircraft's normally already away evacing and you've missed it. And then the Vulcans, I always put those in. You get 22 of them, so you can just spam them in every single tree line you want, which can be a right pain in the ass. It's got a decent uh, range against helicopters and aircraft, so you know you just use them, use them everywhere. They're not expensive. You're not going to miss them. I don't use any artillery. Once again, as I had said previously, I'd been pulled up for not using artillery. But I never feel the need for it. Uh, you'll see later on when I put in my aircraft why I never use it. Because I just use a spam of cheap aircraft. But 
yeah, I never really use artillery. It, it, it eats up my resources and I can't be bothered micromanaging it to move it every time I fire it so that it doesn't get counter battery fired. So anyway, on to tanks. Now, you don't get much tanks um, in the pre-1975. It's mainly um, M60 variants, I guess, or M48s. But you, if you use them properly, they can work well, quite well for you. The MBT-70, um, it's got the Shillelagh C rocket, which has got a decent range on it. It's not the most accurate thing, but these things, time and time again, have got me out of bad situations. So I'll always put one of those in. You, know, you do only get one. And then I'll put two starships in. These things, a lot of people don't like them. I love them. They're just awesome. They help me out a lot. Their gun is great. I love their little gun. It's not very accurate. It's not very powerful, but... If anything, it sounds great. And then for just like a kind of, don't really know what, more of like a, a backup tank, I use my M60A1 Rise pattern. It's got a medium stabilizer, so it's really good on the move. So if you want to do attacks, I generally use that to lead the attack with a couple MBTs supporting, uh, MBT-70s. So onto reconnaissance. Straight away, you got to put the Kiowa for me. Kiowa, I know it's only got very good, um, optics on this variant but I go with it anyway you get seven of those so you, you can't really go wrong and then I've been putting in a few rangers which um, is a first for me recently but if you use them properly they're quite good and then I'm gonna put another Kiowa in because it only cost one so yeah they if you use them right even with the very good um, the very good optics you can you can still do pretty well with them Okay, now onto the vehicles. Now this is where this deck, in my opinion, really comes into its own because of the amount of these little babies that you get. The M150s, I love them. You get 14 in each card. You can get two cards of it. So I put two of them. That's 28 of these things. They've got 2625 range with 10 accuracy and 16 AP. So considering they only cost 35, you can pretty much spam them everywhere in tree lines and you'll quickly find that they'll take down any tanks, even some of the higher tier Russia, uh, Russia? Russian tanks quite quickly. And then one M67A1 Zippo. I use these things offensively, um, defensively, and even for throwing up smoke screens. I'll just fire on position certain areas, let the fire burn up a bit, and then that causes its own smoke screen. It's just such a great multi-role vehicle. You need to use it if you've not used them before I suggest putting them in your deck and giving it a go uh, obviously don't use it to fight other tanks at distance helicopters very limited that's why you could put a mechanized um, a mechanized option on this without really affecting yourself too much for this one I would steer clear of the heavy hogs I don't really like them um, but I go for this cheap AH 1E Cobra you get 22 of them they cost like 65 to call in, so you're not going to be crying over losing one of these. And they can actually help you in sticky situations. I only ever use them to um, take the brunt of an enemy offensive, just so it gives me time to bring up more troops. Okay, now planes. I feel this is the, the best point of um, this pre-1975 deck. Uh, it's got some great planes that you have available to yourself here. Um, the Aardvark, F-14, you know, the Wild Weasel if you like using it. But for this deck, I like to put a Prowler in, and then I go for my Corsairs. I try and get two sets of Corsairs, so it gives me eight, and then you've got an extra third point. So I either go for an Aardvark or another Prowler, and in this case, I think I'm going to go for another Aardvark, just because... Uh, I do really like the odd box, which gives me eight Corsairs. These things only cost 45 to call in. I use them all the time. Like, uh, I'll make a gameplay video of this and of this deck, and you'll see using these, spawning them off the back. So from the very beginning is really good. You can spawn them and napalm important roads. You don't even have to napalm where you think the enemy's gonna be, as long as it's where they're gonna go, because it'll cause chaos just trying to drive through that fire. So right there. That's the 1975 deck that I use, uh, pre-1975 deck. Um, I'll just do a quick overview. It's three logistics, six infantry, three AA, uh, well, three support, all AA-based, uh, four tanks, three recon, 
three vehicle, two helicopters, and four aircraft. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys like the deck. If you've got any input on how to make it better, it would be nice to hear it. I'll put up some gameplay soon.